So I've been playing a lot of Remnant 2 since its latest update, and I was going to start my third Apocalypse Clear, and I was wondering to myself if it would be possible to tank every hit from the bosses, as well as kill them without shooting them. And as stupid as that may sound, the answer is actually yes. Okie dokie. Getting into the build, we're going to talk about what we're using before we discuss why we're using it. So if you're confused on any particular choice, just wait for a second and I'll explain. For armor, you are using the full Lidl Mark II set with the exception of the gloves, which are the Labyrinth gloves, simply because they give more armor. On our Relic, we are using the Crystal Heart with armor effectiveness, healing effectiveness, and health. Our amulet is Nimue's Ribbon. Then we have the Dense Silicon Ring, Ring of Omens, Blessed Ring, and Soul Guard. The weapons do not matter in the slightest, with the singular exception of having the Song of Aethir mod on whichever weapon you'd like. And then we are using the Medic Archetype with Summoner as our secondary. Traits are Triage and Regrowth by default. We can't spec into those, they're given to us. Then we're specking into Fortify, finishing off Vigor, doing Rugged and Blood Bond for our minions later. We'll talk about that. Shade Skin, Bloodstream, and then Spirit. Spirit is completely optional. I chose to build into that for reasons we'll discuss in a moment, but you could easily go into something like Siphoner since you guys will actually be attacking bosses, whereas I was not. But moving into why we are using what we're using, the goal of this build is to accomplish three things. One is to allow us to face tank just about any attack from any boss in the game in Apocalypse difficulty. The second is to heal so much that we out heal whatever damage we receive after it's reduced from our DR. And then the third goal is to be able to kill bosses without shooting them. This is not required for the build to work, I just did it for shits and giggles. Circling back to the first point of DR. We're using the heaviest armor we can find with the highest armor values just because we want to get our armor DR as high as we possibly can before moving on to flat DR. Using this armor set along with the Relic Fragment and Fortify, this puts our armor DR at 64.5%. Then if we move on to flat DR, the Crystal Heart when used gives us 25% DR for 10 seconds. And then on top of that we have the Blessed Ring, which gives us two stacks of Bulwark whenever a Relic is used and for 15 seconds afterwards. And then lastly, because we're going to have two minions, we're using Soul Guard which gives us another two stacks of bulwark, putting it at four total, as long as the minions are alive. And now that's not really a concern. I've never seen a minion die using this build, no matter the boss I was on, but we'll get to that in a minute. This puts our total DR at 81.2%. We're actually wasting 1.2% since it caps at 80. But to preempt the inevitable person who asks why I'm not using bark skin, it's because I can do math, unlike a lot of people making videos on this shit. Just to give a quick example though, because I feel like nobody is questioning this and it's quite incredible. There's a particular particularly popular build going around right now. And this build with the armor they want you to wear has 60.4% armor DR. And then on top of that, they want you to take the flat DR relic fragment, crystal heart as well for 25%. They want you to take 10% on bark skin, 15% from the turret on the engineer, and then five stacks of bulwark from hardcore metal band. That's 25% DR. Another 15% from hardened coil, and then another 10% from indignant fetish, the amulet. This puts their total flat DR at 105%, which makes their total DR 102%. Now it'd be really cool if armor and DR worked that way, but it doesn't, meaning they're wasting 22% DR. And just to put this in perspective, we could take out the Fragment DR, the Trait DR, the Turret DR, Hardened Coil DR, and Indignant Fetish DR, and they'd still be 0.2% over the DR cap. People are going crazy crazy fucking overboard on these DR builds, and it seems like none of them actually know how to do math. But to the inevitable guy who asks why I'm not using bark skin, it's because DR over the DR cap doesn't actually help you just because you want it to. Moving on to the healing goal of the build. Now that our damage reduction is capped, we're reducing things as much as we can. We also have 100% uptime on that damage reduction. It doesn't require us to get hit or anything like that. It's just always there. Now we focus on healing. The Medic Archetype gives us Relic Efficacy Boost. We're also using Healing Effectiveness on our Relic Fragment. And then we also have Nimue's Ribbon, which boosts the effectiveness of Relics by 50%, in addition to giving us haste for something like 25 seconds after a Relic use. This allows us to use the next Relic, 
even faster, which is good. We want that. The relic in question is Crystal Heart, which, when paired with all the boosts, allows us to heal about 170% of our max health over 10 seconds every time we use this relic. It also gives you 25% flat DR in that time, as well as a reduction in move speed, which can be annoying, but we'll circle back to that because it's really not the negative that you think it is. Pair this with the Medic Archetype's Prime Perk, and this means that after X amount of healing occurs, we actually get a relic charge back, which means you can almost safely use this relic every 10 seconds to have 100% uptime on the DR and healing that it provides. However, if you are in a prolonged fight, you will actually run out because it's impossible to heal yourself enough to maintain infinite relics. However, this is in part how the minions come into play. Minions receive relic healing. Whenever you use a relic, they get healed for a fraction of it because of one of the medic perks. And then on top of that, they get increased damage and crit chance. Because they receive healing whenever you use a relic, that counts for the medic archetype's prime perk, meaning that it is possible to use one relic, heal yourself and your minions, and get more than one relic back. I've received up to three before, which means the concern of ever running out of relics gets completely eliminated, because your minions will take damage with you from your apocalypse bosses. They're never going to die because you're healing them enough that it's impossible for them to, especially with the recent health buffs they received. And then on top of that, because of all the healing that is occurring, you are getting all the relics back, giving you the ability to have 100% uptime on your DR and your healing. Now circling on to damage. Because we have shitloads of healing constantly, this means we can use the dense silicon ring, which gives us 200% of regenerated health, regardless of it's gray or not, back as mod power. We'll get to mods in a moment, but next we have Ring of Omens. This allows us to dodge, regardless of our weight, which is at 90. And because we're in the flop category, it also means that when we do dodge, it converts 15% of our max health to gray health. This means that every time we dodge, we get healed almost instantaneously for the amount we lose, and then we get that back as mod power. In addition, we can also dodge to top off the healing bar for the medic and get a relic back. If you really dislike the gray health conversion involved with Ring of Omens, you are more than welcome to swap to Bright Steel. I just think that Ring of Omens has far more utility for this build in its ability to grant us both mod power and relics back. On the note of mods though, if you don't want to go this mod route, you can switch to Bright Steel and then switch off of Dense Silicon Ring and switch the Spirit trait points into something else like Siphoner, since you guys will most likely be attacking the bosses. Lastly though, let's take a look at both Blood Bond as well as Song of Aethir, the mod I told you to take earlier. Blood Bond and Song of Aethir do not work like DR. They are separately calculated, which means Song of Aethir, when you shoot it, reduces the damage dealt for any enemy within its radius while it's active. And then on top of that, once you get that reduced damage dealt, you use your DR on it, which reduces the amount taken, and then the final amount taken is reduced by 10% and shared with your minions. This allows the minions to get hurt more, which allows them to heal more, which allows you to get your relics back even faster. You really don't need to worry about Blood Bond causing your minions to die, because they never will. They get an insane amount of healing, just like you do, every 10 seconds. But just a quick example for how Song of Aethir and Blood Bond come into play. Let's say you were taking 100 damage from an enemy. If they had Song of Aethir afflicting them, that means they would deal 15% less damage, meaning they would instead deal 85 damage. That 85 damage gets reduced by 80% in accordance with your DR, which reduces it down to 17 damage damage. Now you actually take 17 damage, but 10% of that gets split and shared to your minion, which means you instead take 15.3 damage. Now that may not seem like a very huge difference, but it's the difference between 80 and 85% effective DR, meaning that if you took 900 damage, that is the difference between taking 180 damage and taking 135 damage. And I'm sure most of you can recognize that is a huge difference between death and life. For most builds, since at best you're usually going to see around 150 health, unless you build into that specifically. Song of Aethir shouldn't be used willy-nilly, it should just be used when you know that a boss pattern is coming, like in Ravager when he's about to do his spin and I know it's going to happen, I can shoot Song of Aethir at the ground, take a little bit less damage. Now Ravager can't actually kill you regardless, but it's just a way to be safe. This build allowed me to complete my recent third run through of Apocalypse. The only bosses that were particularly annoying to kill with this were Cancer, just because he had Regenerator and that fucking sucked, and Annihilation, simply because the minions have a very hard time hitting it when it moves around so much. I was just in that fight for a really long time. 